that we have voters that are um, upset. This has not been an easy several months. But what has led to PAC chambers, to multiple people signing up for open forum, meeting after meeting, is a feeling of a lack of transparency, a feeling that you can't trust this council. To me, the way this proposal has been rolled out is fraught with those same problems. This is a very complicated issue, both. It's not as simple as just saying term limits and direct election of mayor. There are a lot of different ways that those can be structured. I'm not making any statement or judgment about whether or not these are good proposals. I just don't think they should be thrown out as a we know best, these are the proposal, take it or leave it approach. If we're going to make a, a big decision to change the charter of the city, then it should be done in a thoughtful, broad-based, and resident input manner, not like this. This is something that should take some time, that people should have time to digest it. We should see what we want it to look like versus having it thrown at us when there really is no time for any change or thoughtful discussion. This would have to be, there's a month and a half maybe left before this has to go to the Board of Elections. So to me, we, I'm not against doing it. It's doing it meaning let's have a discussion, let's have a citizen input, a comprehensive review of our charter and determine what the best way is for this to look like. That I'm for, not having this ram through at this late juncture. Thank you. Uh, Tim, uh, first I'd like to say thanks to you, um, to Diane and to Barry, um, obviously for your extensive research and your presentation. Um, I personally like the concept here, and I think it is worthy um, of exploration. Um, I don't know if you remember this, but um, when I, I'm, I'm completing my first term in office, and I remember being asked uh, during the meet the uh, candidates night if I actually believed in term limits. That was actually one of the questions, um, and I actually said I did. And uh, so I, I just because I believe that it is important to have new ideas and and. and new perspectives in government, and uh, I think you're right. I think when you have representatives that have been in office for, for, for many years, they do become a little entrenched in their mentality. Um, I think they do things the way that they've always been done, and it does kind of create almost an entitlement um, to the position. Um, so I think, that you, um, I think that you see that not only in council seats, but I also see that you, um, you also get that in committee appointments. <coughs> And uh, I think that, uh, quite frankly, that's kind of what we're exploring right now. And uh, I think that's what we're experiencing right now in our community. And I just want you to know that I do, um, you know, like I said, I do like the concept. And I do, uh, I do agree that it is worthy of exploration. So, Anybody else like Mr. Weisgerber? So, Tim, thank you for coming up. Uh, you know, we had a conversation a little bit. And, and like Ms. Bailey, I think the, the, you know, our charter has not been reviewed for a good number of years uh, from a whole comprehensive perspective. And, and there's a lot of things that we need to be looking at in that charter review to give it a good once through. If this is the right thing to do, I would like to make sure it happens through a charter review, which I would fully support. I'm not going to sit here and tell you I'm for or against this at this point. What I don't want to see is the lack of transparency and how we got here. So I do agree we need to have a look at it. I do agree and would fully support a charter review that would happen. So it, by the, we get to 2018, we have had a charter review and we can bring all of those amendments to the residents of Loveland, which includes uh, potentially these ideas. That's where I would be positioned. May I answer that real quick, Mr. Anybody else? Um, who, who said that? I did. Uh, Mr. Braun, may uh, Mr. Canada come back again to answer this question? Is it up to me? That's up to you as presiding officer. I will, I will allow you to come back. Can I stand here with this yes, long As long as we can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> you talk loud enough, I can hear I am, uh, I'm sure if we are unsuccessful in our petitions to get this on the ballot, that Diane, Barry, and myself will be glad to serve on a charter amendment uh, committee 
to help the city get through it because we do have the experience researching it. We'd love to do it. Thank you, Tim. It would be my intent to include you. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Phelps. Just want to echo some of the statements that were made. I, I, I think we do need to, to slow down. We heard that message from the chief and pause on a number of issues, and I think this is probably one of them, um, in that uh, I'm not sure what is being proposed, um, the exact terms of it. Moreover, I'm not sure the public has had that ability to discuss and perhaps improve uh, the language that would ultimately need to be in the ballot initiative. And, you know, I think we've, I'd like to think we, we learn lessons um, as we go along as a city and especially as, as city council members. And to the extent there's been something important and large in the community, like what we do with City Hall, the message on that was slow down, get public input get it done right, and that's what I would advocate for this. And for that reason, I'm not sure I can get behind um, this particular proposal. Um, Ms. Gross referenced um, having that meeting, and I recall that same question about term limits, and, and I, I have a real problem with term limits because I can disenfranchise the voters because it, it sets up an artificial barrier to doing what the voters want. If they want to elect somebody that's been in uh, on council for a term or two or three, um, that's their right. Uh, I don't think artificial measures that would prohibit that are necessary. I trust the voters. Um, I, I didn't run and I was appointed to this position when Linda um, retired. I hold the mic a little closer, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Is that better? Boy, it's rare that people claim they can't hear me. Um, I happen to believe in term limits. I think it is, to your point, it brings fresh blood in. Um, I think we need some good guidance on, one, how we propose it, how it fits into our current charter, how the charter amendments have to be done. Um, However, I also believe that as we move forward, we need to put targets and dates so that it's not what can be referred to as a slow roll, so we get the review that gets passed and passed and passed, right? And nothing ever gets accomplished. So as part of this review process and getting people together, we got to put target dates in set. We need to have formal legal review of what can be done. And I'd love to say we're going to do it all at once. I don't know if that is realistic or logical. We may need to prioritize assigned dates and then move forward with an execution plan. All right? So I, I think it's worthwhile. But thanks, Tim. Um, and also, there has been a lot of work by, um, I think, is Diane and Barry here um, in the audience? Yeah, thank you for your work. Um, it looked like you put a lot of thought and research into it. Um, the charter hasn't been um, changed since 2003. So that's a very long time. And things have changed quite a bit. So I really like the idea of a charter review committee being formed and for us to take care of these kind of issues um, plus other issues that are in the charter that need to be changed. So um, I, I hope we can um, continue this discussion later in the agenda and decide what we want to do with, um, with your comments, with your suggestions. 